So the next step is going to be to put this into Substance Painter. So what we do need to do is export our low poly and our high poly. So I have my low poly selected there. Just going to export, export selected. And I've already exported it once, so it's remembered what I've done. So I'm just going to export it to, as an OBJ file, LP underscore rock OBJ. Click on save. I'm going to make sure that I'm not exporting materials, creating a library, and I'm just going to enable these settings. I just like make, take a note of those settings and just try and replicate those. Click on export. It won't take long because it's quite low poly. High poly may take a few more moments. So file, export, export selected, high poly rock. Same settings as previously. Just takes a few more moments than the other one. Doesn't appear to be the case that any errors have been kicked up so we should be good to go. So let's just load up Substance Painter and then we'll essentially bring these two assets in and apply a material and try and output that to Marmoset in the first instance and then ultimately UE4 eventually. Marmoset purely because sometimes if you just want quick visualization of an asset that's a great way of doing it and we'll try and set that up so it uses some form of Unreal Engine 4 material and then ultimately we'll finally put it into UE4 and all three should look the same. So what we should see essentially in Painter uh, Marmoset and UE4 should more or less look the same. So I'm just going to go File New. So what this go this is going to be is I'm just talking about the basic pipeline process. So how to bring stuff in, how to apply a material, and how to output it out into what we need. What it isn't going to be is a full tutorial on how to go about using Painter and the generators and all the other various wonderful tools within it. Naturally, you are go supposed to go away and do that yourself. So the template's going to be PBR Metal Rough, and I'm just going to select my low poly. I'm going to output my document at 2048 so we can see something which is relatively detailed. I'm click on OK. There's my low poly asset. I'm just going to click on Bake Textures, and I'm going to bring in my high poly to my high poly rock. Open. So as you can see in here, output size, we want to try and get that 2048. Don't go wild and put this onto 4096. You may find that once you start using multiple materials, then the machine will just slow down to a crawl. Um, and it's just not worth the aggro, especially when you consider, ultimately, you're not going to be putting 4096s uh, in the actual engine. So you may, at a, at a later date, once you're convinced that it's perfect and looks great, then by all means, bake out a, a higher resolution one for your portfolio at a later date. So 2048 by 2048. I'm going to stick with the defaults, make sure yours is more or less the same, and I'm just going to click Bake Default Textures. Give it a few moments. We'll see the final output of what is baking within this. There we are. So you can see here it's baked out a normal map, world space normal, an ID map, ambient inclusion, curvature, position, and thickness. So now all we need to do is go in there and just add in some additional uh, materials, obviously. It's got some of those materials on there, but clearly it's a bit dull and boring at the moment. So I've already made a pre-existing one over here called ASR Concrete. I'm just going to dump that on. And again, this isn't about how to go about making you know, the world's greatest concrete texture. Uh, figure that out yourselves. It's not difficult to do. It just takes a bit of time learning how to use the software, and then you'll be right as rain. Uh, that one looks alright. I'm not massively convinced on that one. I do have another one which I called Bricks and Mortar for another project. And I'm just going to dump that on there. <clears throat> yeah, that one doesn't look too bad. Quite happy with that one. What I'm going to do is I do have some form of moss uh, material somewhere. Let's have a look where that is. Here we are. So this one here. Ground moss. I'm just going to drop that on the top there. Great stuff. I'm just going to use a smart mask now. Uh, again, I'm not going to worry about trying to get it to be the world's greatest uh, rock at the moment. Let's have a look. I'm just going to drop some of these on there, try and get something that looks reasonable. Uh, that one's not too bad. Dust subtle. Let's have a look at dust subtle. No, it's too subtle, that one. Dust stand. Once you've done this a few times, you will get an idea of you know which one to ultimately utilize. That one I don't mind yet. So it's got a bit of a bit of moss on there, it's not you know too bad. Just want to try and keep it subtle more than anything else. And we can do this till the cows come on. We can experiment and experiment, experiment, and keep changing and keep changing. Uh, ultimately, you know, you could be there forever and a day. 
You've just got to figure out what works for you and what doesn't. That one's not too bad. The, uh, the moss is a bit more prominent, uh, but I'm going to stick with my original one over here. So once you're happy with your materials and you drop, drop them on there and you figure out whatever it is you need to figure out, it is quite simply a matter of exporting out the asset. So I'm just going to go to File, Export Textures. So this is where we need to be very careful. We need to try and ensure that we're outputting a file format which will be readily acceptable uh, from UE4 and ultimately it's easy to bake out everything and create the textures that you need without having to go back into Photoshop and make modifications again. So what we're looking to do is export essentially three textures, a normal map, a albedo map obviously, and a channel pack texture which will contain our roughness, our roughness sorry, our metallic and our ambient occlusion all in one texture. So make a note of the fact that those three textures are actually grayscale norm, uh, grayscale norm maps, grayscale maps. So we don't need to worry about you know combined RGB. We'll just separate them off, and we'll drop our roughness in the red channel, uh, the metallic in the uh, green channel, and the ambient occlusion within the blue channel. I already automatically have uh, a channel set up within this. Or sorry, a channel, a setup within this. It's called Shaf UV4. If I was to just go to my configuration, we can have a look at that within here. Essentially, we just need to replicate this. So I'll just go around and show you how to go about doing that. So what I'll do is I'm just going to make a new configuration, a new preset. I'm just going to rename that and call it Student UE4. Not UES. Do that again. UE4. So we need an RGB. And this RGB is going to be uh, our albedo map. So base color, just drop that on there, RGB channels, that will do. I'm just going to confirm that that is correct with my original one that I made many, many, many moons ago. Once you've done it once, you'll never need to do it again. So naturally, come six months down the line, when you need to make or replicate it, you won't have a clue what to do. So I can just use this as a, as a quick guide. So we do need to, an RGB one as well. I'm going to rename this and call this Alb, Albedo. And with this one, I'm just going to call it RGB. So as I said previously, our roughness, we can drop that onto our red channel. So I'm just going to click on grey channel, and that will be within the red channel there. Our metallic, if we can just find out where that is. Over here, drop that onto there, grey channel again. And ultimately, our ambient occlusion needs to be dropped in there, and grey channel again. So again, I'm just going to triple check that is the case. You can see that it is on my other one that I made many moons ago. So just test that out and make sure that it's correct. And then finally, another RGB, which is going to be our normal map. So normal, normal. And that needs to be normal direct X. And just drop that on there. And then RGB channels. And just to triple check to make sure it's good. Yes, it is. Works fine. Student UE4. So we'll actually use the student UE4 configuration that we just made. And that will automatically be saved. So I'm just going to click on export. It's defaulting to the one I normally use, mine, but in this instance, we're just going to click on Shaf UE4. We need to define where that's going to uh, export to. In this instance, I want to export it uh, to my rock based test folder over here in second year vids. I'm just going to dump it in here. And then PNG, uh, you can leave it as PNG. I'll just leave it as PNG. PNG will work absolutely fine as well. And then just hit export. And depending on the complexity of the asset, uh, it can either take uh, a few moments or it can take quite a while. So and as you can imagine, if you have uh, multiple materials being baked out at the same time on very, very complex assets at 4096 by 4096, then believe me, you could be waiting a while. So just make a note of that. What you don't want to be doing is waiting ages and ages and ages and ages only to find out there's something quite wrong with the uh, texture so probably bake out a much smaller document size in instead of 2048 bake out smaller convince yourself it works and then re-export afterwards so we might as well just open the fold and see what that's done so there's our albedo map that is made great stuff there's our normal map and there's our channel pack texture which doesn't look like much at the moment but believe me it has a roughness and the metallic and the albedo sorry ambient occlusion baked in by the rgb channels so we'll do this within Marmoset first of all. So I'm assuming most of you have in fact given this a go and you know the basics of Marmoset. So there's our little poly. I am going to use a UE4 template 
as a preset and just drop that on there. So let's just go around and place the relevant textures within this. So the normal map uh, needs to be our normal map, obviously. We'll leave that as is. It looks like we need to flip the Y channel in this instance, so I'm just going to flip that. What I also am going to do now is just change this. So it is a rock that we're ultimately making, so I might as well just use a preset such as Forest Path and click on Done. So our gloss map is essentially our roughness. So click on that and select your RGB. Make sure the channel is on red because red is our roughness according to what we did. And just go around and add all the additional textures here. Yeah. So we need to add our albedo uh, as well. Click on that, there's our albedo. It's going to make sure, I'm just checking here because sRGB color space, if I turn that off, it gives us some varying results. So I'm going to leave that on for the time being uh, and I think we should be all right. So we've got our albedo on there as well. We don't need to worry about channels uh, for that particular one. Our reflectivity essentially is our metalness. So make sure this is on not on specular but is in fact on uh, metalness because that's the, the, the format we're baking out at and select our RGB again but this time around on the channel our metallic is always on the green so I'm just going to drop that on there then ultimately we've got our ambient occlusion as well so let's just drop that on there ambient occlusion and with the occlusion define the RGB one again and then make sure this is on blue so that there is in essence our rock. We can within this just make sure that sRGB filter is turned on and again with this one over here sRGB color space is turned on as well. And there we have it, there we have our wonderful rock generated entirely from uh, Max, uh, outputted into Substance Painter and then ultimately dumped into uh, uh, UE, sorry, uh, Marmoset engine. So that's how to do that. So for your beauty shots, you can certainly adopt this technique. Uh, ultimately, the process we just adopted there is exactly the same for outputting into UE4. So that will be our very next step.